Lucy Townsend. I really enjoy talking to Lucy. It's um, functional medicine and reversing cognitive decline. Uh, she works with al Alzheimer's patients, and uh, she um, works with a protocol that a, a doctor uh, had 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 created, Dr. Bredesen. It's called the Bredesen Seven, and there's seven very obvious uh, uh, steps you need. The first three are the pillars that I I talk about and live by quite often, and it's nutrition, exercise, and sleep. But there's the remaining four may be a surprise to you, but it's all things that everybody can do. She's got an excellent Instagram uh, uh, site where she um, talks about you know foods that are best for optimal brain health, turmeric, um, lion's mane, etc. We talk about you know foods for memory, fatty fish, apples, avocados, etc. But it's just a um, I, she's very very engaging, very smart. Has done a lot of research uh, on this area and. She has seen symptoms reverse, completely reverse in six months following this protocol. Uh, it's a, it, it, we need to talk about it more. Um, we're, you know, we're the, the, the link between the brain and the gut is so very important. What we're doing to our bodies, most of the time, not purposely, just not understanding what we're eating and how it's affecting our, our brain and our gut and our body. Uh, but it's a great conversation and we need to have more like this to, uh, to help us to help us get healthier and to get better. Thanks for listening. Hi, I'm Joey Pins. People ask me, how did I lose 130 pounds? The quick answer is always discipline. I started my business, wasn't paying attention to my health, was eating too much, you know, drinking too much sweets. My daughter was born. The next thing I know, I'm pre-diabetic, I have hypertension. I knew something had to change, discipline. I, like many of you, have faced many challenges in your career, in your family, in your life, in your faith. How did you attack them? How did you approach them? How did you solve them, hopefully? It all had to have some degree of discipline. I'm also asked, how did you found and start a tech business that lasted over 25 years? Discipline. I was committed to it, enjoyed technology, didn't enjoy some aspects of it, but knew it was necessary. Discipline. Our podcast mission, how do we use discipline to better ourselves and society? Join me, please, as I talk to interesting people and discuss how they use discipline in their family, in their passion, in their careers, and how it helped them. Our podcast vision, growth through learning from others. Joey Pins Discipline Conversations. It will be light and serious. Join us, please. Thank you for consideration. It's beautiful. Lucy, Lucy Townsend, thank you so much for your time today. I'm very, very excited to talk to you. How is functional medicine, It's how is it helping reversing cognitive decline? That's a great question. Well, functional medicine gets to the root cause of disease. And the organization that I have a dotted line to, which is called Apollo Health, which is a actually a technology company that um, was founded by Dr. Dale Bredesen, who is a neuroscientist and a neurologist, um, really diagnoses and um, we find um, through uh, algorithms um, is how we diagnose um, our, our patients. And so by, by root cause medicine, um, we, we do a deep dive through a cognoscopy to find out exactly the subtype um, of dementia that our patients have. And so a cognoscopy is a very detailed way of looking at patients and involves um, very extensive lab work. Um, it involves a series of blood tests that reveal risks, online cognitive assessments, and then depending on the severity of the individual, a functional MRI. So we look at you know blood blood work um, in addition to um, you know scans with volumetrics. And um, so that's what functional medicine is really in a nutshell. It's root cause medicine. 
Um, and with dementia, you know, dementia is a multifactorial disease, Alzheimer's dementia, and it involves a variety of pathogenic pathways in the brain that is assaults that have been going on for many, many years. It's not just one thing that's caused memory loss. And now we know that from years and years of, you know, he knows that from years and years of laboratory work in the lab. And then of course, um, he no longer treats patients, but he was a neuroscientist and researcher and, uh, and worked with mice and, um, and then of course worked directly with patients for many years. Yeah, you make the point that Alzheimer's disease is, uh, you, you said the word insults uh, to the brain, inflammation, insulin resistance, toxins, infections, poor nutrition, hormones, growth factors. How, how much does hereditary play a role? That's a good question. So one of the things we do when we look at, when we're doing a cognoscopy is we do a genetic test called APOE4. And APOE is a protein that carries cholesterol around the body. And APOE comes in mainly three forms, uh, E2, E3, and E4. And it has at least a hundred complicated functions in the body. And our APOE4 doesn't work well um, as the others, and it causes problems in many places. And scientists don't actually yet agree on exactly why it causes a problem in many places. Um, but there are some theories. Um, one is the amyloid hypothesis. The other is the tau hypothesis and then the prion hypothesis. Um, lastly, the mitochondrial hypothesis. And it also appears that APOE has effect on genes in the nucleus of the cell. They switch on and off. Um, and so there's, the, the Alzheimer's genes, um, the, the risk factors, they they about 25% of people carry one copy of the APOE4 gene, two to three carry two copies, and the strongest risk factor for Alzheimer's disease, um, inheriting the APOE4, you know, does not definitely mean that a person will de de definitively develop the disease but it is a risk factor for both Alzheimer's disease and for cardiovascular disease. So 4-4 um, being the strongest. So if you test 4-4, you have a higher chance of developing hmm. dementia. And you mentioned three or four hypotheses. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is, one, is one gaining more ground than, than others? Is there one you particularly lean towards? How, how are they, are they all trying, or do they conflict with each other? How exactly does that work? Well, there's some interesting things going on right now. The amyloid hypothesis has been kind of controversial because it actually got, um, it got into some trouble recently because hmm. um, they've been some drugs have recently been approved in the last year. Yeah, you've probably heard about based on the amyloid hypothesis and the tau hypothesis that were kind of dis they've been disproven in the last twenty years. Oh wow! And um, so it's been very controversial. Um, the mitochondrial hypothesis is still very valid because. You know, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. And um, because we know that this is, you know, dementia is affected at, at a cellular level, that still really weighs a lot, it has a lot of merit. Um, but these, a couple of these drugs that were just approved and were based on the amyloid hypothesis the jury is still very much out. And these wow. drugs got pushed through the FDA. It was very controversial. People left during the drug trials. Yeah. There was a lot of controversy. People had brain bleeds during these drugs. They did get pushed through. Another one's gonna get probably approved in the next couple months. Um, so again, um, a lot of controversy around these, these drugs right now. And the, the beauty of this protocol, the Bredesen protocol, is that we don't use drugs. This is a preventative protocol that we use. It's pre for prevention and reversal. And we try and get people educated early on. 
we do the genetic testing, we do all this, this cognoscopy to try and find people early on to do prevention and reversal. And we also do a lot of education to let people who start to feel what's called MCI or SCI, so mild cognitive impairment or subjective cognitive impairment, hmm. um, to do prevention. And Dr. Bredesen has now written a book called Early Survivors of Alzheimer's Disease, um, where he's actually taken 100 patients and out of those 100, we've had 85% with 100% reversal Wow! Um, by using this protocol. And so again, it's a lot of lifestyle interventions. Um, in the protocol, we look at nutrition, we look at exercise, sleep, detoxification, supplementation, brain training, and stress. And we do a very, very individualized deep dive look based on the individual's findings, um, you know, their lab work, their functional MRI, et cetera, et cetera. And then it's precision medicine. Um, and we really hone in on their individual lifestyle and um, it's a ketogenic diet and um, intermittent fasting. And, you know, when I mentioned the Bredesen's, it's called the Bredesen 7. Yeah. In that order that I just mentioned, do we, um, we focus the importance of the protocol? And, you know, depending on the individual and their level of memory loss or cognitive decline, you know, we'll see people improve six months, you know, in the first six months. I've seen people improve in three months, depending on their severity of, I mean, I have people that have multiple insults. For example, if there's a person that's, that's got complications with Lyme disease or with, um, you know, herpes or with, um, you know, a lot of gut dysbiosis issues. So it depends on where the person is and what their particular issues are um, and how, you know, how much um, they've been affected by a, a, a variety of insults, if you will. Hmm. Um, but I've seen amazing results with this protocol. And, you know, as we know now, we know so much more in the last even 10 years, the relationship between the brain and the gut and mm. this bi-directionality and they're constantly talking to each other. And so, you know, one of the things that we, we do right away is we really try and go in and, and clean up the microbiome, the, the gut health and, um, and focus in on that and, um, really uh clean up those pathways and um between that and getting people into a mild state of ketosis um and including the intermittent fasting we can see some really significant changes yeah i want, I want to talk more about the the b7 the British 7 but first why is there such controversy in this stuff getting pushed through with the drugs as far as Alzheimer's. Is it just pure desperation because of what's happening? Do you have any theories on why that's occurring? Well, interestingly enough, so I started doing research um, back in the early 90s. So I was at, just out of graduate school in the early 90s, and there was a drug on the market. That was when one of the first drugs was on the market. It's called Cognex. And it was right when Ronald Reagan was diagnosed. Mm. And... It was interestingly enough when um, the, ironically too, Ron, Reagan had shut a lot of the VAs down because of lack of funding. Mm. And I was working at a VA in Palo Alto. I was working through Stanford Hospital, the Palo Alto VA, the Menlo Park VA. And I was working on the PTSD Boulder Adult Center unit. And I was working primarily with veterans, but I had some Stanford professors who had early onset cognitive decline and they had this drug approved and I was a research student and we were doing a study, but it was the study I was on was a long five-year longitudinal study. And we were looking at 
stress response for caregivers. Mm. And they had just started giving individuals this drug for early onset memory loss. So I was interviewing both the, the caregiver, so usually the wife or you know the husband, depending on who had it, and the um, care receiver. And so I, like I said, I had, I remember very specifically, I had a couple Stanford professors who had the disease, both male and female. And I had several vets who were actually, they were Vietnam vets at that time. And um, so to answer your question about the the drugs, um, that was, you know, almost 30 years ago. Right. Now we've come full circle. Since these two drugs have been approved, one pending approval, one was approved last year, um, atacanumab, there wasn't a drug approved for 18 years prior to wow. these. Wow. So, you know, they spend hundreds and millions of dollars to bring a, a drug to market. The truth of the matter is these drugs have not worked. Mm. And the drug that's real popular that you see on the market called Aricept, you're probably familiar with, which they approve for memory loss. The drug has worked for some people very short time. It shows some very short term help, but it doesn't show any positive gain for major reversal. And that's unequivocal. And, you know, these big companies, and it's the same company that's approving the same drug, hmm. um, you know, they're, they're, they try and push these drugs through before, for gain. Um, and there was this, like I said to you, this amyloid hypo- hypothesis that was being discussed by a couple scientists. Um, and that theory has kind of been pushed out because there was controversy and fraud surrounding the findings with that hypothesis. And I, evidently now they're saying that the amyloid hypothesis is no longer true. Wow. And now the scientists are, you know, in their labs coming up with, there's other things they're saying that are really what, what are the drivers and Dr. Dale Bredesen's theory is that it's a multifactorial disease and it's related to years and years of exposure to poor diet, Mm. lack of trophic support through lack of exercise, pollution, poor sleep, you know, massive problems with the inability to detox, you know, um, you know, stress, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's this process that the body has, and some people don't, aren't able to, there's something called methylation. And some people have the ability to methylate. In other words, essentially detoxify. Hmm. Some people have a much better ability to detoxify and have better detoxification pathways in their body. And some people don't. And through blood testing, we can find out if your body has this gene. It's called MTHFR. And you can find out if your body has this ability. And through this protocol, we can clean up those pathways and help your body to become more efficient in detoxification. And um, so, you know, with in part of the the Bredesen 7 and in part of this whole protocol, you get a 60 page test, excuse me, uh, you get a 60 page um, diagnostic overview and we will determine what type or subtype of Alzheimer's dementia you have. And we have identified five different types inflammatory, glycotoxic, atropic, toxic, vascular, and traumatic. And then based on what type you have, like I said, we do a personalized protocol for you. And, um, you know, then we really get into and do a deep dive. For example, if it's inflammatory, which is associated with inflammatory markers such as HSCRP, 
which, you know, is somebody with a lot of inflammation, could be related to infections, often unrecognized like leaky gut, a suboptimal diet, you know, or other risk factors. Um, like let's say you have APOE, you're a high risk APOE person. You have chronic infections like Lyme disease, or you have um, other factors, undiagnosed Lyme disease. I have a lot of people that have no idea. They've never been treated for Lyme disease. Mm. Um, they have P. gingivalis. They have severe gum disease. They don't realize that they have severe gum disease. Um, they've eaten a lot of trans fats over the years. Don't realize that. Um, again, severe, you know, gut damage, severe microbiome damage, you know, and other factors. So when you've got severe inflammatory issues, it can really cause havoc to the mm. brain. And again, as we know, this bi-directionality, this constant talking back and forth is it affects the brain because, you know, there's this microbiome. There's also this access. Now we know that there's also something called leaky brain. So that inflammation gets into the brain, like it gets inflammation gets into the gut hmm. and it causes this massive inflammation in the brain. And then you get this inflammatory type of dementia. Let's, let's, let's talk more about the Bredesen seven, because I, I think this is where people can really, it's not difficult steps. And, you know, I've had struggles with health before. And I always, I always felt the three main pillars are, you know, nutrition, exercise, and sleep. And those are actually the first three. You kind of hone in on plant-based, nutrition-dense, whole foods, and intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. I intermittent fast. I really enjoy it. I find that I just don't need three meals a day as I was taught all my life. Yeah. Uh, so is that essentially it? About 12 to 14 hours of, of non-calorie of non calorie consumption, uh, it, then you start to see the benefits? Yeah. So what we recommend, depending on your APOE score, so, you know, four, four. So if you were to come out as a carrier, so you're at the higher risk, we recommend longer fasting. Hmm. Um, so we recommend your fast be between, you know, 14 to 16 hour fast. Wow. Now, remember, you're sleeping most of the time. Yep. Oh, yeah. So your sleep so let's say a typical person would stop eating at seven o'clock the night before. Then you break your fast, let's say at 10 o'clock in the morning. And again, your body really adapts quite easily to this. And then the, the nutritional component is very much, um, you know, plant based seasonal. Um, and, it's, it's very, um, you, like you're familiar with ketogenic, um, yeah. you know, very, very seasonal. We definitely off, you know, allow for, for meat and, um, but it's, it's very, um, the generous servings and we definitely teach you to monitor your ketones and your glucose levels. And we, we use a, a couple different, you know, we use keto mojo as one. And we also use another um, device called BioSense, which is something you breathe into. So you're taught to, to use these tools. And, you know, in my case, I, I work with my clients and recommend that they write these, their numbers down um, so that you can keep track. And um, so the, the ketogenesis component is really, yeah, the, the key component. And you want to get yourself into a state where you're burning fat as fuel. That's what, you know, mm. ketosis is. And exercise, then sleep. At least seven to eight hours of optimal sleep Correct. is vital. Correct. You want to get yourself into a state of deep, restful sleep. Um, and, you know, sleep is really important um, the body's way of cleansing out damage to the cells in order to regenerate newer, healthier cells mm. is a state of autophagy, and that's triggered um, when the body is is starved of energy. So there's there's it's twofold. 
So it happens when you're sleeping and it happens when you're fasting. Um, so it, it can occur with calorie restriction and it can occur with ketosis. Um, and so that autophagy is when you're, you're dumping all that, those damaged cells. So that's why we do those two things. And it's important to, um, you know, to be in that fasted state and also to make sure that you're getting that sleep. The, the other important um, part of, a really important part of getting sleep is for the glial cells, which are the cells, brain cells, and they also need to dump um, the toxins in the brain. So sleep is, is of critical importance. And um, it's also been noted that when you, you sleep well, you tend to crave less. Right. Yeah. So a lot of individuals we find that have um, memory issues have sleep issues. Um, a lot of individuals I work with use CPAPs machines, um, and have breathing issues. So we do a lot of workarounds with that. Um, and, um, uh, there's a lot of different hacks you can use now with sleeping. People do gentle taping at night for nasal, proper nasal breathing. Um, and I mean, there's, there are many ways to get really good sleep hygiene in. You can take gentle supplements before bedtime to help with, with good sleep, passion flower. I mean, there's so many really good things you can take that are non disruptive for sleep and, you know, non narcotic things that are very, very helpful for sleep. And, you know, there's, there's so many great, um, again, very, very gentle things that help with sleep now, um, that help with really good sleep hygiene that we recommend. So yeah, sleep is another really important thing. And to get into that really deep, deep, restful meditative sleep. Mm. I mean, everybody, when you get a good night, when you wake up and you, and I, wow, that was a great sleep. You could just tell you feel so refreshed and energized. I've, as I get older, Lucy, I find that I'm a morning person and I could just, uh, tell that, you know, how much better I feel once that solid night is in four and five are managing stress and brain training, mm -hmm. certainly managing stress. We just, you know, PTSD, the people are under so much stress these days, whether self-imposed or not, regardless, they're still stressed and uh, brain training. Let's talk about those two, please. Yeah. Brain training. So one of the things that we do offer is a computer program that was designed by a scientist at, um, oh, MIT, you know, that little school, MIT. I think I've heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> and the program it's just up the road, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you. It's called Brain HQ. And, um, you know, one of the things I tell my clients is, you know, if it's stressing you out and overwhelming you, then, then don't do it. And Brain mm. HQ, you know, it's like luminosity, I think was one of the first ones that came out. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's like luminosity on steroids. Um, it's, it's all, it's got all different kinds of programs. Um, we recommend you do it a couple times a week. Huh. It's part of the protocol and it's got all different kinds of, um, different training for, for rapid eye movement. But again, it's very specific for improving cognition and, um, and, and memory and, um, you know, quick training of, of thinking fast, um, recall. Um, and I have some people that really enjoy it and I have some people not so much. Mm. So I, you know, for other things for brain training, I recommend puzzles. I recommend playing cards. Mm. I recommend learning a language. Mm. I recommend crocheting. I recommend, you know, things that are enjoyable that involve critical thinking, quick thinking. Um, hmm. And, you know, it, so it's not just limited to computer games, because not all people like to sit in front of a computer. And for some people, it can be very stressful. Um, 
So, you know, there's a variety of things for brain training that, that you can do, but it definitely should be something that challenge. I mean, the New York crossword puzzle is challenging. The New York Times sure is. puzzle is very challenging. It sure is. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of different things. Playing an instrument is very challenging. Mm. Learning new, I mean, I have clients now, I have a client now um, who's quite young, who has been playing the banjo for many years. And I said, take up the guitar, um, you know, switch it up. And, you know, that sounded super daunting to him, but he's taking up the guitar. Mm. So you can, you know, mix it up. Um, you know, it's been kind of fun for, for people, which has kind of been a big sport is I said to somebody, try pickleball. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. Racket sports are very good for brain, the brain. Mm. Uh, mm. They involve so much eye-hand coordination and being out in the sunlight is incredibly good for mm. you. And so I've recommended to some people try pickleball. That's the fastest growing sport out there. It sure now. Is. And the eye-hand coordination, plus if you're a social person, great. And if you're, you know, if you're in good enough health and fit, great sport. Even better. Yeah. You mentioned detoxification. Oh, I'm sorry, Lucy. Yeah, go ahead. You mentioned detoxification earlier, but then number seven is supplements. And this has come a long way. I was always, I shouldn't say I always was taught, but there was a wave of at a certain point saying that they really don't do anything and now they kind of come back. I, I do take supplements now. Uh, talk to me about that. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So- you know, we do a variety of, I would say, more aerobatic ah. type supplements. Um, with the, you know, th this protocol is all based on the foundation of mindfulness. Mm. Um, you know, Dr. Bredesen, who is very much a Western trained physician, um, has got if this is a very functional medicine based protocol with the eye of root cause and because of you know his research and his success in healing people um we have found that you just using things like ashwagandha um not sure if you're familiar with ashwagandha oh. but it's a root um, and it is used similar to GABA, which has got a calming effect on the brain. And it's something that can be taken before bedtime. As I mentioned, um, mm. you know, there are many things that you can use therapeutically to help with sleep. Um, and ashwagandha is something that can help people to take before bedtime um, to help with a relaxation state. Um, so again, depending on what your labs come out and look like, whether you've got high cholesterol, you, you've got, um, you know, whatever your, whatever your situation is, whether you're dealing with Lyme disease, whether you're dealing with high cholesterol issues, whether you've got uh, whatever it is, and we, we have seen everything, um, will we incorporate um, supplements? Um, so, and of course we treat people that are on medication. I mean, multiple medications. I mean, I've got pe many, many people that have, you know, um, uh, multiple health issues. Hmm. Um, so again, the protocol based on, you know, what your health issues are and, um, um, you know, what is safe and effective for you will we re recommend the supplements. You've got an extra, excellent uh, Instagram uh, page, Lucy. And uh, along those lines of supplements, you have one post where you said food you know, for optimal brain health. You mm -hmm. mentioned turmeric and lion's mane, which, which incidentally I take as supplements. Mm -hmm. is, there any, is there any benefit in taking them as non-supplements, turmeric as the actual spice in lion's mane versus a supplement? So... Turmeric is hard, you know, turmeric is a beautiful spice. It's been around and used in, in Indian cooking for years and years. Mm. Um, it's hard to get the recommended amount mm. cooking wise. Um, 
to get the proper dose in, and especially in the, to get it to go into your bloodstream effectively, it's the, 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 and I take it in a, the, the proper way to get it is a curcumin oh. and, um, you've probably seen it in that, in that form. Is that the way you take it? No, it's just a uh, turmeric supplement. It's just a, uh, yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the derivative and the way it goes, it's bioavailable in the body is through, um, curcumin hmm. and, um, that's the way it's the most bioavailability bioavailable. And it acts as an anti-inflammatory. Hmm. Um, as far as, um, lion's mane, um, which you know, I take lion's mane and again, we, we recommend it for individuals. Um, you know, it's antimicrobial and it's, um, also used as, you know, a, um, immune builder. And, um, again, very, very beneficial derivative of mushroom. Yeah. And excellent products. Again, our, our patients use them, our clients use them. And, um, both very, very, very good products, very, very good products, well-researched. And, um, I don't, again, I don't take any medication per se. I would rather go that direction. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. Rosemary, blueberries, sardines, walnuts, cacao, coconut, mustard greens. Try to get, uh, you know, those, those deep greens at least three to four times a week. Yep. Um, quercetin, uh, you don't mention that at all, but I take that as well. Quercetin is, I mean, again, the science behind quercetin, you know, I mean, it's an amazing histamine blocker. I have not taken an antihistamine in probably 13 years. Really? I take quercetin on a regular basis. Um, I got my kids taking it years and years ago when they were kids. I, uh, because I will not take anything over the counter. Like I said, hmm. I mean, quercetin is a game changer. It was a game changer for me when I got turned on to it years and years ago. And I've turned so many people onto it. Yeah. It's a, it's a great alternative. Um, not just as a antihistamine, but for anti-inflammatory, and, um, and again, it's amazing to me. I, I always smile when I read more and more science that comes out about it. And I see now when I see all these mainstream doctors prescribing it, it just makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where have you been? But better late than never. Right. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. It's really good stuff. Yeah. Foods for memory, fatty fish, dark green vegetables. We yeah. talked about apples, flax seeds, peanuts, peanut butter, avocado, eggs, whole grains, dark chocolate, sweet potatoes, and walnuts again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and again, and, you know, we are bio-individual as human beings. And um, I think that, you know, we have to be mindful of what we are okay with. Not all of us can eat the same. And we have to be really mindful of how our body reacts to things. Um, you and I could eat the same thing and I could be very sensitive to certain amounts of dark, even dark chocolate. Some right. people, um, I could be more sensitive to coffee. I mean, coffee, not all coffee is created equal coffee, you know, unless it's organic, you know, coffee tends to be where it's grown. It can be very moldy. Um, mm. Yep. Unless it's organic top coffee can be, um, the way it's grown can, can be loaded with mold, um, dark chocolate, kind of the same thing. You gotta be careful. So you gotta, you gotta kind of be conscientious about where your food's coming from, where it's sourced, how it's sourced. And then also, you know, your own microbiome, how is your health? How is your current health? Um, you know, and now the good news is, is there's a lot of really good testing out there that is very accurate. And, um, you can get yourself tested and mm. tested again to see how clean your microbiome is, your entire body is for that matter, and keep testing yourself, um, and, and track it. And, uh, you know, uh, but it's, you know, it, t it definitely takes work. It takes energy. Um, but it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. Um, 
and uh, you just you just feel so much better. Mm. And it's worth it because you're you're um, you're it's you know if you don't have your health you don't have anything. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And uh, yeah, when you work out, when you eat well, your your body rewards you. You just feel so much better. And um, I, I don't know if I've never had a cup of coffee my whole life. So I really? I uh, yeah. Yeah, I just never started. And, you know, my father's Italian too, and it's always in the house, but it's just I like, never started. I think I saw my mother wean off of it, and she was such a bad person for a month uh, that I think it just kind of wore on me. One of your one of your posts, you say best animal protein. And you talk, there's a picture of like shrimp, fish, lobster, sardines, eggs, and you have DHA and choline. Is that how that's pronounced? Choline. Choline. Choline is found in eggs, again. And my, my focus on my, um, ins you're looking at my Instagram probably. Yeah. yeah. That's all focused for brain health and choline in found in eggs. Very, very good for brain health. Yeah. My focus is a hundred percent foods for brain health. Um, and yeah, there's a ton of choline found in eggs. And of course that's, you know, pasture raised. I don't buy anything. I, I get all my eggs from my neighbor who I'm lucky. She's got a, about 30 uh, chickens out in the yard. Nice. Um, but yeah, farm fresh eggs. Absolutely. And I'm fortunate, you know, not all people can eat eggs, but I'm fortunate I can eat eggs safely. And, um, of course um, we all, we're all hearing this in organic non sprayed, non, you know, non GMO, no glyphosates, um, and you got to be careful, um, make sure that, uh, you know, you're buying, um, certified organic and you're mm. stopping the outside of the grocery store. I mean, glyphosate is deadly. It's just, it's deadly. Um, and, uh, one of the biggest, the biggest things I see with clients is most of the people that I treat have had some kind of toxic exposure, mm. some kind of toxic exposure, exposure, whether it's glyphosate, whether it's lime, whether it's mold, um, a good percentage of the individuals that I treat have had exposure. If you can believe the statistic, I kid you not, 50% of the houses in this country have mold in them. Wow. Have water in the home that are people undetected and it is terrifying that people don't realize and people are being exposed to mold on a public health level that is tragic wow and it affects the brain and it affects the brain at a level that is very dangerous and, um, you know, being in an old home or even being in a new home and, um, you know, once the mold is out and exposed, it gets into the brain and it gets into the cells and unless it's remediated and in the home and then detox out of the cell on a cellular level and you're not, and you're, you know, no, you know about it it continues to cycle throughout wow. the body and make you wow. sicker and sicker and sicker and you get brain fog and you get sicker and people don't realize what's going wrong. And I see this time and time again, and people think they're going crazy mm. and it's very, very sad. And I have young people that have come to me and again, when we get we really look at what's going on and we look at the root cause, we can, help them but it's it's you know it's a process and it takes a long time and fortunately um it's you know it's uh it's it's it, it's it's out there one, one thing we haven't mentioned as far as nutrition and i think you know i think the american public is addicted to it more than anything else and that's sugar yeah that is absolutely true um you know, I, I, um, I personally wish it'd be banned. Um, mm. but it's, um, it's, you know, it's highly addictive. Um, it's very inflammatory. Um, it is very, 
um, provocative. It's very elusive. Mm. It's buried in everything. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, I remember hearing a story from Mark Hyman when he met with an executive at Coca-Cola years ago, the chemist at those companies, you know, that that's what their jobs are is to formulate it into all the drinks to make it as addictive as possible so that you go back and buy more and more and more and that you drink more and more and more and that it, it hits those addictive parts of the brain so that you drink more and more and more and that it's part of the standard American diet. And it's what's making everybody fat and making yeah. everybody sick and it's very similar. I see the correlation to the drug companies. Right. It's keeping people sick. It's keeping people fat. And it's, it's, it's addictive. It's a highly processed, you know, drug. And, you know, the thing is, is the less you have it, the less you want it. That's right. The less you crave it. And um, that's my take on sugar. Really? And the, I will tell you this, for this protocol, the only thing that I recommend, I don't, I don't like stevia. I don't like any of them. I will say a little bit of monk fruit hmm. is okay. A little bit. Um, on the, our website, on the Apollo Health website, we offer many, many recipes. It's a beautiful website. Um, and um, people... I ultimately will say, you know, the less you have it, the less you'll want it. But I, I do say it's okay to have monk fruit. Um, that's about the safest thing. It's okay. It's as a supplement. I continue to read from all my mentors out there in the functional medicine world. That's really about it right now. Incredible. Yeah. You know, I, I took, uh, I'll, I'll share a story with you in a moment, but I took a long trip recently and, uh, I had to drive a long way. And since, you know, I don't drink coffee, mm -hmm. I, I needed something to keep up. And I went in and got a can of soda and I took a, a sip, Lucy, and I spit it right out. I, I can't believe I used to drink this stuff all the time. It's so sweet. It's almost syrupy. There's just, mm -hmm. I didn't get the diet version. I got the real cola brand. And, uh, I, I just couldn't believe it. So back in the nineties, when I started my business, I wasn't paying attention to my weight and my health at all. I was working way too much. Mm -hmm. I found myself at 340 pounds. I had gained too much weight. Doctor said to me, if I don't lose the weight, I'm not going to see my daughter graduate. Mm -hmm. So, uh, by the way, she just graduated Cal state, not too far from you. Um, so, uh, I took the next year and a half. I made all the nutritional and exercise changes. I lost 130 pounds. And people, I, when I tell people the story, I can just see it in their eyes. Like, what's the secret? Is there some kind of secret? You, well, tell me what you did. And I just, Lucy, I just say discipline. Okay, I just focused, got discipline, changed what I did. I wonder how discipline plays a role in your life. You know, discipline plays a huge role. I mean, I will tell you this. I grew up, and so I now I live in the East Coast. Oh, yeah. I live in Virginia. I live in North ah, Virginia. That's right. You're in DC. Yeah. In, yeah. I grew up in California. Yeah. I grew up in California, very outdoor. I grew up, um, I mentioned, um, I played a lot of tennis growing up. I grew up with a very athletic family, was outdoors, went to uh, college in California. And um, I grew up with two older sisters. <laughs> who ate macrobiotically and I grew up in the seventies. And so I learned how to eat and that kind of culture mm. of gardening and all that at a young age. Um, and so I would consider myself to always have been healthy um, and always been into health. I did my undergraduate degree in physical therapy. And so I've always been very active and liked the active lifestyle. Um, and so I, you know, I was lucky in that regard. Um, and then, you know, went and, and did research years ago in, in uh, geriatric medicine. And that was kind of piqued my interest in now where I am today, kind of full circle coming back and working with uh, Alzheimer's and this, this population. Um, but uh, so, you know, it's, 
it's a very rewarding space to be in. And there's a lot of people, this, this field is, you know, there's still a lot of people that are getting sick and so much of it is related to the environment. Mm. We continue to see it and people need to get educated and people need the earlier you can get on prevention, the better. Um, and one of the things that I always say is, you know, genes are not your destiny. People say, I'm so afraid my mom has dementia mm. I get it. and I say, no, you're not get on prevention. The earlier you get on prevention, the better you're absolutely just because your mom had breast cancer, your, your genes are not your destiny. The earlier mm. we emphasize that all the time, the better, um, you know, one of the things that we didn't talk about in the protocol, which is really important, really critically important, um, is exercise. That's actually number yeah. two. And, you know, one of the things is BDNF, brain derived neurotropic factor. And BDNF is extremely important and it's a molecule made by the brain. And it's critically critical for, for learning and memory and the more of it we make in response to moderate to high levels of, you know, intense exercise, the better. And we're more apt to do it when we're younger. But one of the things that we do, and I do a lot with my clients now, is something called EWAT. And it's exercise with oxygen therapy. So I have many clients who are, you know, 65 and up. And they'll get on a treadmill and they'll actually strap oxygen on and get oxygen delivered to them while they're walking. Hmm. So you're getting massive doses of oxygen to the brain while you're walking at just normal pace. Very, very good for brain, for BDNF. So it really increases um, support to brain plasticity and how brain cells adapt to their connections and functions and the growth of new blood cells and vessels. And, you know, we now know that bloods, you know, we, there's something called neuroplasticity. So brain cells continue to develop and grow at later stages. Brain cells are not always dying. You can continue to grow them. So, you know, it's, continuing to exercise and doing things like with, with detoxification, like doing saunas and doing hyperbaric oxygen, which are all things that we recommend as part of this protocol and doing, of course, the fasting and, um, you know, reducing oxidative stress through really good eating habits, um, and getting proper sleep. These are all critical things to improving cellular health for your brain. Um, so these are, again, these are all part important aspects of the protocol. And by the way, not expensive things to do, you know, not, you know, you just need more sleep. You've got to do exercise. You've, you know, it's just, it's, we're not asking to invest millions of dollars here. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned sauna and hyperbaric. Certainly some of those can be expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can get them at your local gym, you know, your sauna, et cetera, that, but you know, when you're talking about these things, they're just so fundamental. Leafy greens, three or four times a week. Supplements, they're not that expensive. It, it can be done staying on the perimeter of the of the grocery that you said, of course. Stay out of the, the center aisles. Mm -hmm. It's not difficult, and it just it makes a, a, a lot of sense. Lucy Townsend, what motivates you? You know, it's a good question. I, If you had asked me that when I was 25, 30, you would have had a different answer <laughs> just a couple of years ago, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Now what, mo what motivates me is, um, being able to have my own business and really being able to give back and support and have a purpose driven mm. life by helping others. So those, those, those are things that motivate me. 
I can't imagine what the sense is like when you bring somebody through the protocols and they're reversing their symptoms in six months. I mean, that, that must be, I haven't mentioned yet, but my father right now is in late stage dementia. It's very, it's very, very tough situation. He's in another country, he's in Italy. So, you know, it's very tough situation, but just to the satisfaction that you, you must get from helping people through this must be just wonderful. It, it's incredibly rewarding. And I, the thing is when I have people come to me feeling hopeless, it's hard. It's very hard. So when you see people getting better and even people that are, you know, you get people that have, you know, very little speech left, um, all different mm. stages. I'm very transparent. There are certain people that I can help. There are certain people I cannot help. And I am very transparent about that. Um, you know, there are certain types of dementia that there is no treatment for, but there are others that absolutely, we've had cases where we've had people that have come in with absolutely no speech where we've been able to get them back, back talking and back functioning. Um, and you know, there are others, um, that are, that's not the case, but we, we realistic about, about things. If it's very, very late stages, it's, it's definitely a, a different story. You know what I mean? Mm, mm. And that's why we really try and encourage prevention early stage, get, get, get yourself genetically tested, get yourself on early prevention. You know, this is a lifestyle and it's, mm. it's not hard. Like you said, it really isn't hard. I mean, I practice the protocol. I live the so do I. Yeah. And it's, it's, you know, you just, you practice it, you do it, you educate yourself and, um, you feel great. Yeah, you really do. How do you measure success, Lucy? Well, it, it kind of goes back to your first question. I measure success for me. It's been through being able to branch off and have my own little, you know, small business and really being able to help people and make an impact um on these individuals lives that's been that's been my measure of success at this stage in my life i really really i'm really glad you accepted this i was very excited to talk about this. there has to be more discussion about this the the, the protocol just makes so much sense um you know, people just have to do some essential things just to get so much better. Mm -hmm. Bad food is readily available and it's inexpensive. We know that. And it takes perhaps discipline to stop yourself from doing it or maybe just doing it once a month or once a quarter if you can't cut it off. But just most of the time following these this protocol, following getting sleep, doing exercise, pro proper nutrition, it's all right there. How can we get in touch with you, Lucy? You can get me on Instagram at Functional Medicine Lucy. You can get me on my website at FunctionalMedicineAssociates.net. And I will tell you this, that um, Dr. Bredesen will be, um, if you join Apollo Health, you know, we're, he's always doing clinical trials. So I know that another clinical trial will be coming up next month. Oh, wow. Um, so I've got a couple of my clients right now that I'm going to be working with to get in the next clinical trial. So, you know, those are definitely things that we're, we're always looking towards hmm. as well. It's really important work. And so you're looking for volunteers? You know, if you're in the right, if you're a good candidate, yeah. Interesting. If you're a good candidate, absolutely. And what's involved? So you'd have to be part of, you know, part of involved in, in the protocol and, um, you know, not on any of the medication on any of the cholinergenic medications, um, Aricept or any of the medications and, um, on either not on the protocol or in the protocol, depending on what, you know, his particular, um, criteria is. Mm -hmm. And he'll, I, I understand he's announcing that sometime next month. I see. 
Very good. Well, we'll make sure to put all those locations, uh, your web, your Instagram in the show notes. Yes. An absolute pleasure talking with you. I really appreciate it. Uh, at Forever in the D.C. area, perhaps we get, uh, I was going to say a cup of coffee, but a cup of tea or something and talk more about it. But I love this conversation. I love continuing it. I think it's only going to help. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate your time. You be well. You too. Thank you. Thank you for listening and or viewing Joey Pinn's Discipline Conversations. Please share this episode with one or two of your friends who you think may benefit from the episode. Our website, www.joeypins.com. There you find lots of resources and you could join our mailing list. Please follow us on all our social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook podcast information the video version of our podcast is on youtube please subscribe audio is on all major podcasting platforms please follow them and if you like it please consider giving five star rating would really appreciate that would you like to financially support the podcast you can go to our patreon site consider five ten or twenty dollars a month there's all kind of plans that we have there it's like a one-time payment. What is this podcast episode worth to you? $25, $50, $100, $500, $1,000, $5,000. You be the judge. You can go to our PayPal account to do that as well. Thank you again for listening or watching Joey Pin's Discipline Conversations.